Yeshiva World. Uh, we're here today for a very simple reason. That is that Jews have been living in New York City for 360 years, since 1654. The first Jewish community came here from Brazil to escape the Portuguese who were taken over and were persecuting them. Unfortunately, what we've seen in the last year is really a shockingly high rise in anti-Semitic crime like we've never seen before in New York City. The latest statistics that we have from the NYPD are that anti-Semitic <coughs> crimes are up 39% this year across New York City. It's gone up from 64 acts to 89 acts. Really disturbing is that last year there were only three violent acts. This year there have already been eight. Part of what concerns us is that this is an international trend. We have seen anti-Semitic acts go up in London, in Paris, Frankfurt, literally around the world. So as we sit here, one week before the start of the Jewish time holidays, and many folks, even folks who do not traditionally go to synagogue or act in the communities, will be going out. There will be an increased presence of Jewish activity. We are very concerned. Considering that New York has the largest population of Jews, some million Jews outside of the state of Israel, it's even more concerning because we're talking about such a large percentage of people that are being impacted. You know, a lot of folks have said, well, you know, there are international situations, there are situations in Israel, Gaza, but guess what? The last month there's been a ceasefire, and instead of anti-Semitic acts actually going down, they've gone up over the last month. But I think this is something that certainly concerns us. Of course, we're concerned over every biased crime that happens here in the city. We've spoken out against all of them. But this is especially unique considering what we've seen on the international trend, considering the high holidays that we have, considering the amount and the number that's gone up. And quite frankly, I'm going to let some of my other colleagues talk to you, but many of us as elected officials have even been victims of anti-Semitic hate mail. And this is not true of hate crimes in general. The only two categories of hate crimes where we've seen any measurable increase in this year are anti-Semitic attacks and anti-Muslim attacks, which we also denounce in no uncertain terms. There, thankfully, the numbers are smaller, but still rising at the long range. space means for people in our city who have always enjoyed the ability to practice religious freedom without incident. Today, the Jewish community and the Muslim community continue to fear others that want to take out prejudice, hate, and anger on all of our communities. So we're here today to make it very clear that we are not going to allow people, cowards if you will, come and attack our people World. without us vandalizing with anti-Semitic spray painting, windows being broken. So we have an obligation to lead the way again and to adapt and to adjust to the ever-changing global events. And I want to underscore this that when there was flyers found in southern Brooklyn against even Muslims, we spoke out. Because again, we believe that this is a city that has a zero tolerance towards hate and intolerance. And when they flew a swastika over Coney Island and Brighton beaches earlier this year, to a community that has a large Holocaust surviving population, that is not just an attack against Jews. There were over 11 million people slaughtered in the Holocaust. This country came to this city fleeing religious persecution. For many of us, that was Jewish families facing pogroms in Europe, targeted because they were Jews. But that story for so many New Yorkers, whatever religion, whatever race, whatever part of the world they came, they came here because this was a hit get against the Caribbean. And walk half a mile and get some roti from the Caribbean. And that is the beauty of the fabric of New York City. And the response that we have every time that these things happen continues that tapestry. We have to continue to stand up to say you cannot do this to anyone because you are doing it to all of us. It's not as bad as a physical crime. I actually have news for you, it's worse. Because when you spray a swastika, you're sending a message to everyone. Thousands of people have seen it. We saw this on our synagogues. We've had it sprayed earlier this year. We've seen it on our schools where thousands of children have seen it earlier this year. We've seen it on homes. The fear that you get when you show up in your house and you see a swastika is like unlike any other fear and it's intimidation that's unacceptable. I want to invite our colleague of all different ethnicities standing at this podium to say enough, enough of hate crimes. 
Enough of hate crimes against Jews and anti-Semitism. Enough of hate crimes against everybody in New York, regardless of where you fit along the spectrum. The Chancellor Angela Merkel got up and she headlined a rally that was against anti-Semitism. There needs to be more resources, there needs to be more understanding, there needs to be more outspokenism from the other side of City Hall. There needs to be a clarity that on the local level, that when anyone comes with a hate crime, whether it's a Jewish hate crime, or a Muslim hate crime, or a black hate crime, or any hate crime at all, that the precincts need to immediately flag it and take it seriously. We've had complaints from people who've gone to the precincts and have said, I believe that I just had a hate crime committed against me, and the response to the precinct was, no, that's not a hate crime, that's just an assault. That's not your decision. That's not the local sergeant or even commander's decision. It needs to be reported. It needs to go directly to hate crimes. This was an issue that I raised last week directly with the hearing with the police commissioner, that I actually believe that there's an underreporting of hate crimes in New York City, and that's part of the problem. So we're going to stay on top of this. We're going to keep pushing until we see results. Thank you all very much. We'll be happy to take questions. Suggesting in the immediate future to be done while you're sitting down discussing why you may bring up legislative. So the first thing I've discussed with uh, Chief Boise is that we need to make sure that all the inspectors know and it gets down to local precincts as well, that anybody who comes in and alleges a hate crime, whether it's Jewish, Muslim, Black, LGBT, it doesn't matter, that needs to be immediately flagged, it needs to be put into the report, and it needs to be sent to the Hate Crimes Task Force to investigate. So we're very fortunate. We have the greatest Hate Crimes Task Force. Part of the problem is they're not even getting all the hate crimes, because in many cases that's not trickling up. So he assured me that he would speak to his brass and make sure that that message actually goes through. And the other the other thing that we're calling for immediately, obviously, is more resources, especially as the high holidays are upon us. We need to see more police presence in New York City, especially in predominantly Jewish areas.